Hallelujah. Okay, we are going to start now. We have just we prayed. And last week we were discussing about something. Well, among us who are, who, who are present, who can remind us what we learned last week? What, we, what, what are we discussing about? What topic was it? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I think if I'm correct, the second coming of Christ and the Amagino. Okay, God bless you. That's it. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So we were discussing about the second coming of Lord Jesus and the Armageddon. And we said that is part one, yeah. introductory part of it. Yeah. And um, it was, I, I, I had the same uh, intention to continue the same topic today. And while I was preparing, I was being led to do something separate, something different today. So we are not abandoning our teaching of the end time, but just for today, we are going to discuss something separate, something different. And it's for every one of us. Nobody is exempted. Everybody. And therefore, I want us to listen attentively and uh, pay attention and be focused as we look into this topic. It's not, it, 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 it's not word or the topic that is not familiar to us. Many of us must have heard of it, must have read about it. And uh, maybe when people, uh, men of God or servants of God are preaching, they must have mentioned something like that. But I want us to go into it just briefly before we pray. And let's open our Bible now to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm going to read from verse 5. I will give you the topic. While we let's finish reading this verses. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm going to read from verse 5. I read in Jesus' name. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it, and he will do thee good. He will do you good, he will do me good, he will do us good. And not only to do us good, and multiply thee above thy fathers. That is, we are going to be greater than our fathers. If we follow the same precept, we will keep the same precept, we will obey the same word of God that God gave to them. And the Lord promised that we are going to multiply, will multiply us and will, will, will give us, make us good, and we will be, will be greater than our fathers. Then verse 6 said, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine hearts and the hearts of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thy hearts and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. That is for you and for me to live before God, for us to live and to be able to see the goodness of God and to be able to be, uh, enjoy the multiplication that God promised us, God said he's going to do something for us. He said he will circumcise our hearts. So what we are going to discuss briefly is circumcision of the hearts. Circumcision of the hearts. That what we are looking into. Circumcision of the hearts. So let's go on to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5. The book of 1 Thessalonians, we are going to read some verses there. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 17. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, I read from verse 17. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not the not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, as seen from all appearance of evil. 
and the very God of peace, not Jesus the author of peace, is the Prince of peace. And he's telling us here, the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here in that verse 23 said, and the very God of peace sanctify you partially or sanctify you half-heartedly or sanctify you just part of it. Is that what is written there? I want, it, uh, it's interactive now, I want, no, what, does it, what does it say? Your whole heart. God bless you. He said, sanctify you wholly, every part of you, every part of me, every part of us, spirit, souls, and body. That's exactly what he tried to tell us. When you look at it again, sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit, your spirit man, and your soul, my soul, your soul, and your body be preserved. What? Blameless without any faults, without any sin, without any blemish. Blameless unto what? Unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means if my body is blameless, but my spirit man is tainted or have wrinkles or has stain, that means my whole body my wholeness is not made is not made whole. That means I'm not qualified to be able to meet the Lord at His coming, because we are told that we need to be it, it need to be preserved blameless. So if made out of three, the whole body our we are comprised of three. Uh, different uh, uh, segment now in that, that make that make us to be complete. That is our spirit man, our soulish man, and our body. So these three need to be what to be sanctified holy and preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus. Why? Because if my body, which is the physical one, is blameless, I take care of it, I look beautiful or handsome, elegant, presentable, without no fault, nothing, no, no, no stain on my garment, that is physical garment. Everything I wear, so everybody has seen me, they say, oh, wonderful, good. But if my spirit man is tainted or half blemish, that means I'm not, I'm not going to be qualified for the coming of the Lord Jesus. And that's the reason why we are considering this topic, circumcision of the heart. Everybody, man and woman, young and old, children and adults, nobody is exempted. We need circumcision of the heart. Because if we are not circumcised, then we we'll see be in the nature of the old man. We we'll see be living the life of old man, and we we'll see continue in the way of sin. And whatever we do, we may try to say that okay, I'm going to do all my possible to live a all sin, but it will be in the flesh. That means we will be struggling to live a all sin. We'll be struggling in order to attain to God's righteousness. But all those struggling, all those efforts we are making or we are putting up, we amount to nothing because of what? There's no amount of your effort or your struggle to live above sin without being circumcised in the heart can attain to God's righteousness. Either yourself or myself. None of us trying to do it by ourselves.
can attend to God's righteousness. We cannot attend to his holiness, to his purity, to his godliness. To the point of being blameless when Christ will come. And we are, we are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus. So we need our heart to be circumcised. Let's read now from the book of Colossians chapter 2. The book of Colossians. We are reading chapter 2. I read verse 11. Colossians chapter 2. I read verse 11. I read in Jesus' name. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hand. Men of all we profess that we are circumcised, that we are born again and saved by the grace of God. That's our own confession. That is, you confess that you are born again, you are saved, and you are a new creature, but there's still the work of uncircumcision in your life, in my life, then that is the work that we made by ourselves. Look at it again. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. That is the hand of God alone. It is not by you, not by me. But if we are making it by ourselves, that's the time we, we could discover about okay, um, we suppress anger, we suppress money, we suppress bitterness, we suppress uh, envy, we suppress so many sins that support to be emanating from our life because we are seeing the old nation. But because we are confessing and we profess that we are born again, then we do it by work. The work of man's hand, that is your own effort. How? When, when you, are, you are furious with anger, with bitterness, with irritation, you, you do it by yourself by suppressing because you don't want people to know that, oh, you are still having anger, you still have bitterness, or you still have madness, or you still have uh, irritation. You try to suppress it, but no, no matter how long we try to suppress all these things, one day it could have expo explodes. It is then that we'll be able to know that, oh, oh, this brother is not really born again. And he has been preaching to us. He has been teaching us the word of God. Oh, no wonder. Why? Because it is made by man's hand. That is by my own efforts, by my own making. I'm trying to do it by myself. I'm professing I'm born again, but I'm not born again. I'm not saved. Because of what? I try to suppress the anger. I try to suppress people knowing that I, I, I don't feel happy and bitter against someone. I project that I'm giving a false impression. I smile with people, laugh with people, but not really genuine laugh, not genuine love. A genuine laughter comes from the depth of your heart with love of God. But when you, when you smile and you laugh carnally, just pretentious one. Is because deep down, maybe there's unforgiveness in the heart. And when you see that person, and the God said, Oh, the Lord said we should forgive. I forgive him, I forgive her. But when you see him, you just you you give a kind of laughter, a kind of smiling. There's in Britain we call it a, a British laughter. They just they not they they, they they will look at you, they will try as if they are smiling with you, as if they really love you or cherish you or really want to, but it's a common kind of slap or laughter, a kind of mocking laughter. Why? Because deep down their heart, they hate you. Deep down their heart, they don't want to. Deep down their heart, they don't want your presence. But they still give a forceful laugh, smile. And that's what many of us do. Why? Because we are not circumcised in the hearts. Our heart is yet of the own nation. We are seeing the old man. And we need to be circumcised in our hearts. That's why he said, here again, I repeat, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made with that hand, in putting off the body of saints, 
of the flesh. That is, the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of who? Of Christ. It is Christ that can circumcise your heart. It is Christ that can circumcise my heart. It is not what you can uh, uh, camouflage. It's not something that you can pretend that you are something when you are nothing. It's not something that you show people that, well, I'm born again, but the fruit of salvation is not there. It cannot be seen. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to the book of Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, we are reading verse 29. Romans chapter 2, verse 29. I read in Jesus' name. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. Most of the time we, we make a show of outwardly. But inwardly is full of dead man bone, rottenness, with sins, with unrighteousness, with iniquity. Why? Because the inward is not yet circumcised. Let me read it again. But he is a Jew, which is which is what inwardly and circumcision that is of the heart. That heart is circumcised. Not prophetic, oh, I'm a Jew, physical Jew. I, I was born by a mother who is a Jew or, or father who is a Jew, and therefore I'm a Jew. That's a physical word. But a spiritual Jew, you are not. Because your heart is not just circumcised. My heart is not just circumcised. We cannot call ourselves, we are Jews by spiritual birth. If we can claim that we are spiritual, we are Jews by spiritual birth, then our in one man, our hearts, have to be what? To be circumcised. In the spirit, and not in the letter, confession, professing. I'm a Christian. I'm born again. I'm sanctified. I'm Holy Ghost baptized. I speak in tongues. I talk in tongues. When I'm praying, it's tongue every time. When I sing, I even I change to sometimes when you sing and then Holy Ghost take over. All those things will amount to nothing if my heart is not circumcised. If the Work of the old nature is still in me. The shoot is cut off, but the root of sin is not uprooted. That is why when a farmer cuts, cultivates the farm, if he doesn't remove the tap root of the weed, it germinates back. It shoots up again. Why? Because the tap root is still there. So I can speak in tongues, I can do so many things. But it depends. What kind of the spirit am I speaking of? Which, if it's of the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, which is called Holy, Holy Ghost, then that means the work of circumcision has taken place in my heart. But if I just speak in tongue, but the work, the fruit of this Holy Spirit is not manifested in my life, cannot be seen in me, or maybe. Well, I speak in tongue, then I project to be uh, meek or to be humble or to be uh, uh, patient sometimes, but I'm doing it with the effort of my own self. With the effort that, well, I don't want people to see me that, oh, he's so impatient, he's so full of anger, he's so, full, he's so irritated, he's, so, he's full of uh, 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 um, all the work of the flesh. Then, we we'll say that, just a minute, my beloved brothers. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Amen. So, when I do all those things, I'm doing it kindly because I don't want people to know the kind of person I am. But if I'm really circumcised and I speak with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, then you can see the fruit of Spirit in me emanating. There will be joy, there will be peace. I'll be a peace lover. I'll be, uh, I'll be patient with my brethren. I will love them just the way Christ loved them. I'll be, some, uh, uh, be so humble, so gentle. 
of the full of the whole, the, the fruit of the seed. Would I even me talking that I'm a born again Christian or that I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost or I'm walking in the Spirit? People around me will see that there's something different about this man, about this woman. Why? Because they can see the fruit of the Spirit in me. Maybe when they slap me, I don't retaliate. I just think it well. That's one of the the, the, the cross, one of, one of the suffering for Jesus. When I'm persecuted wrongly or abused or allegated against, I don't refer, they don't see anything. Why? Because I don't take it as serious because it doesn't change me. It doesn't add to my life. It doesn't surprise for my life. Christ is still in me, which is the, 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 the main thing. And they can see Christ still, they, they, they see the life of Christ being lived through my character, through my attitude, through my behavior, then they said, well, this man is a genuine man, or he's a Christian. But when I'm doing it carnally, in the physical, in the flesh, when the flesh is still rearing up in me, but I'm suppressing it, because I don't want them to know that, oh, don't go there, it's a tigress, it's a tiger, it's a lion, it's a lioness. Don't come near him, don't come near her. That means, I am not yet, I'm yet to be circumcised. Praise the Lord. I read again, first verse 9 to the end. He said, in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, not of yourself, not, not of me, but of who? But of God. It is God that do carry out the work of circumcision in our life, not what you can do by yourself. The one you do by yourself is temporary. You, no matter how long you cover up, no long, how many years, many more than many weeks that you cover up that you are something and you are not, one day it will explode. And everybody say, hey, I can't believe it. Can you behave like that? Can she behave this way? But she processed that she's a Christian, that is born again, that is sanctified, that is Holy Ghost baptized. How can he behave this way? How can he show such an attitude as a Christian? Why? Because it is of man. Man made born again. Man made humility. Man made uh, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost in the flesh. But not in the spirit. Praise the Lord. So, what does it mean to be circumcised in the hearts? You know, circumcision means or rooting, if you listen to me before, rooting out the, the root of sin in me and you. And I want to use an illustration to make us to understand. When we say circumcise, it's like when you perform an, a surgery in a man, in a woman. For instance, a woman that, thank God, we have so many sisters who have given birth. Maybe, during the time of your delivery, they say, well, you cannot give birth naturally. You have to go through cesarean operation. And when you go to the go to the table for you to be to be to, to, for the surgery to be carried out to be for the operation to be carried out from you, for you not to feel pain, they give you injection to neutralize every pain that may come that may affect you. But without the pain, without the injection to numb your, so part of your body, if they want to do it just naturally, you will know the kind of pain you go through. So circumcision is a kind of surgery that being performed by Christ, by God in us. And when you are going through circumcision, you feel the pain of being circumcised. Just like as a woman that is doing cardiac operation, a cesarean operation, to bring out the child without uh, any uh, injection to numb, to, numb, to numb your body, the part of the body so that you don't feel pain. You feel the pain, you cry, you will weep. Even with that operation, when a woman is laboring, you know the kind of pain you go through? That is the kind of pain a child of God go through when he's being circumcised in the heart. When Christ is doing it, you feel the pain. Not physically pain, but you feel it within you. 
And how do you know that? The kind of pain you go through is that, like what Christ went through, when he was slapped, he became as dead, as if someone that is dead doesn't feel the slap. When he was smote upon, it's not that he didn't feel the pain in the body, but he didn't react to it because of what? He, he, he was dead. So the, the, the action of the people trying to take him to the cross or kill him. When they use spear on his rib by the side, do you think that it doesn't fit the pain? It's supposed to be causing them. It's supposed to be raining at, raining at causes upon the people doing it. But rather, what was he doing? He said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. Do you think that ordinary person can do that? That is why sometimes when people abuse us, the countenance, our countenance change. Why? Because you don't like it. When they speak unnecessarily to you, you feel the pain that you have been disrespected. When people talk to you, like if they are talking to the, the junior one, you feel, you feel that, how can he, how can he, how can she talk to me like that? I see not him, I see not her. Does it mean that Jesus didn't see not the people that was killing him? He was the one that created them. But he was not in the flesh, he was in the spirits. That's why we could be able to be able to pray, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. He was in the spirit. And when a man, a woman is circumcised, when the adamination is root out of a man, out of a woman, this, the root of sin is uprooted from your life of my life. What happened? Your, the spirit man take control. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Welcome. The spirit of God took, take control of your life. No matter anybody, anything. That anybody will do to you, you don't feel it. Why? Because your heart is circumcised. The nature of flesh is not the flesh, the carnality is no longer there, no longer ready, no longer the throne reigning. But the spirit of God is now reigning, ruling your life. Why? Because you are circumcised in the hearts. And that every one of us, nobody is exempted. Every one of us needs to be circumcised. Not just professing that I'm born again. Not just professing that I'm a child of God. Not just professing that I'm, I'm a pastor. Not just professing that I'm a, uh, well, I'm a preacher. I'm a teacher of the word of God. Not just professing that, well, oh, I'm a leader in the church. Without being circumcised in the heart, the work of the flesh will be reigning and ruling your life. And then you will not be found blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus. I will not be found blameless. And when we are not found blameless, that means we are not fit for the rapture. So as I said before, circumcision is not something that is easy. Every one of us needs to be broken. Sometimes God can use some, even your child to make to, as a tool to break you. We always say that, well, it, when, when a student doesn't prepare for exam, when he doesn't study very well, when he doesn't have sleepless night to read, we we'll say that, well, this exam is either to make you or break you. So circumcision is to make us. If we yield to circumcision, we yield our life and allow God to perform the surgery in us. And the work of circumcision take place, then it will make us to be what God wants to be. But when we refuse and rebel, to go through the process of circumcision of the heart, then it will break us. And everybody needs to be broken. Every child of God needs to be go through brokenness. If you are not broken, you are still alive in the flesh. You are not dead. And we need to be dead to sin, to be alive to God. We need brokenness. So, for us to be broken, we need to go through circumcision of the hearts. And circumcision, in another way, circumcision it has different meaning, many, 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 uh, many uh, different names. It's called the second work of grace. It's called sanctification. It's called a pure heart. Also, it's called holiness. Amen? Amen. So we, every one of us, with that exception, we need to go through this 
circumcision of the hearts. So let's go to the book of John chapter 17. I'm going to finish it by the grace of God, even though we, are, we, are, we have a meeting, but I'll make sure that we finish before the time of the meeting. Let's go quickly to the book of John chapter 17. John 17. I'm going to read from verse 17. John 17. I read verse 17 down. I read in Jesus' name. Sanctify them through thy word. Oh, sorry. Through thy truth. Thy word is truth. How do you get sanctification? How do you get circumcision of the heart? Through what? Through the truth. And through the word. Who is the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The, the book of John, chapter 1 said, in the beginning was the world. Who is the world? Jesus, the world. He's the one to circumcise your heart, to circumcise my heart, to sanctify you, to sanctify me. Not what you can do by yourself, by the arm of flesh. If you do it by the arm of flesh, you'll be falling and rising like a yo-yo. You be like a chameleon. Today you are a Christian. Tomorrow you manifest the work of the flesh. Why? The body is still the body, your body is still alive, sin. But when your body is dead, just as we uh, 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 illustrated where we are doing the, the heart of man, when the, a man is dead, you don't see that man stealing. You don't see that man retaliating. You don't see that man having anger, bitterness, irritation, having uh, all kind of a. Um, uh, work of the flesh being manifested through the man. Why? Because he's dead. When a man is circumcised, you are dead to sin. I'm dead to sin. We are dead to everything that the world around us can use to make us to sin against God. Let me read again, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me, into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for that, for their sake, that is for your sake, for my sake, for the sake of all those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus, what did he do? For their sake, I read, I read that, except for their sake, I sanctify myself, that they also might be what? Be sanctified. To do what? Through the truth, through me, that is through Jesus, the truth. You cannot be sanctified, you cannot be circumcised in the heart without having Jesus in you. If Jesus is living in your heart 24-7, you'll find it difficult to sin. Because the spirit, the spirit of Christ will guide you to all truths, will help you to overcome sin, will help you to, to be dumb, to be like a, a mumu, a foolish man, a foolish woman. Two cannot retaliate, you cannot speak. Why? Because the body of death, the body of sin is dead. The one that living in you now is Christ that lives in his life through you. And when Christ is living his life through you, you don't do whatever you like. You don't talk when the Holy Ghost doesn't want to talk. You don't speak when the when the Spirit of God is telling you, don't keep quiet. Don't say anything. You are you are you become like a, a dumb ass before God. That's exactly what Jesus did. He was done before his era. He opened the word of God. Said, he opened all his mouths. He became like a fool to the point that the, can't you speak for yourself? I'm asking you a question. Open your mouth, talk to me. But he, still, he didn't say anything. He was in the spirit, man. He was not in the flesh. If he was in the flesh, like you and me, who will have retaliated, who will have speak out, who will have defend himself. But many of us, because we are not dead to sin, we are not dead to our flesh, the flesh still room up, still tear up itself, manifests itself in us. And then when we, when we, when we now come out, I'll say, eh, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. So she, he's like, like that. So she's still like that. She's, he's still like that. Why? Because the flesh is spreading. The adamination, the carnality in you and in me, still ruling. That's why, because our heart is not yet circumcised. But the Lord Jesus is telling us that He said, For their sake, for you and for me, I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. If you are not sanctified, if I'm not sanctified, 
If we are only sanctified by our mouths, by our profession, we are, we are far from the kingdom of God. We are not going to heaven. There's no way we can make it. We can't make the rapture. So we need to be sit tight. We need to really be serious. Now let's go on. The book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, I read verse 3. First Thessalonians chapter 4, the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4. Bear with me as I go to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, I read verse 3. <clears throat> For this is the will of God. Not the will of your flesh. The flesh doesn't want anybody to be holy. It doesn't want anybody to live above sin. The flesh doesn't want that. But it's the will of God for you and for me. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification, your circumcision of the hearts, that ye should abstain from fornication. Do you think that a man, a young man, a young woman, a bachelor, a spacer, can be free from fornication without the circumcision of the heart? It's not possible. That's why Jesus said, when a man look on a woman and lost, he already committed the sin. Not until you go to and lie with a woman or a lie with a man that you, you, you play fun and you say you commit adultery, you commit fornication. Not that, not that. But you are merely looking and lost it. You have done it already. From the past. So if God is going to judge us from the heart. Any people they cannot see the bus in the train with opposite sex, their body will be burning. Why? Because your heart is not circumcised. You are not dead to sin. You are not dead to the flesh. The flesh is root in your life. In my life, in our lives. If it's dead, the circumcision of the flesh. God will take over. You get to every night of you, but you are focused on God. Oh. This woman, this man is mad. The person that is talking to us is not foolish. That one, the person is trying to fight you. What happened to the Lord Jesus? All the people, all, everybody. Why? The person you are beating, the person you are beating upon doesn't even, it, it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't, it, it doesn't pet up. And that's how we should be when our heart is genuinely circumcised. Let me read again. That everyone, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Now let's go to the book of chapter 5 of the same. First Thessalonians chapter 5, I read verse 23, quickly. And the very God of peace, we have read it before. The very God of peace, but for the sake of emphasis, I read again. And for the very God of peace, sanctify you wholly, your spirit, souls, and body, every week. Not projecting that well, sanctimoniously dressed, holily dressed, but the heart is full of rottenness, full of dead men bold. Do what the Lord Jesus told the scribes and Pharisees. You made the outside look garnish, beautiful, presentable. You painted everything white. And even when people go, when they go to the to the to, to the to the uh, 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 burial ground. They will see all the great, beautiful, they decorated with flowers. But what is inside? Inside the, inside the grave, full of dead men's bones. That's exactly what Christ described us with. You may look presentable, well dressed, you look beautiful, handsome, wear suits, wear good dresses, but when you open your mouth, what comes out of your mouth is war. Where the Bible said that let our word be seasoned with salt. But your word, how does your word 
Is your word sorted or full of bitterness? Full of things. We need to check ourselves. Now let's go now quickly to the book of Psalm. Before I read the book of Psalm, let's, let's, I'm going to read something here. At the confession, the righteousness of Christ is imparted unto us. And when you say you are born again, that is the basis. When you confess that I'm a born again, so I'm a new creature, the Christ's righteousness is imparted unto you and to me. So we we'll become a new creature in the Lord. And then we we'll begin to live through the grace of God a life expected of us. So because of, the, as a sort of this experience of being born or being come a, become a new Christian, what, do, what happened to you, what happened to me? We put off away all malice. Everything that called malice is done away with. You put off stealing. You put off lying. You put off quarreling. You put off deceit. You put off drunkenness. You put off gambling. You put off bitterness. You put off wrath. You put off anger. You put off clamor, evil speaking, and every feasible evil deeds. We put them off. Why? Because we are new creation. A new creation doesn't harbor anything that is called sin. If we see harbor whatever is called sin, then we are not born again. We are not yet a new creation. But that's just the beginning. That's the beginning of the journey. The, big, the journey uh, start or began with the work of salvation. Praise the Lord. So we need to make a progress. And the progress is that we need, must make sure that we are exercise in our hearts. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel 36. The book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36, quickly, because of our time, is after four. We are going to finish before five. Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel 36. I'm going to read quickly. I read from verse 25. Please join it with me. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. God wants me and you to be clean. He wants every one of us to be clean. Young and old, small and great, educated and educated. God wants us to what? To be clean from all your filthiness. From all filthiness. And from all your idols. We like cleanse you. Verse 26. And a new heart. Can you see it? Before we have the heart of sin, the old nation. The embrace of sin in, in you and in me. That's what we have before we met the Lord Jesus, before the Lord Jesus saved us. But the minute you give your life to Christ and you give, surrender yourself for the process of circumcision, what, this is what takes place. It said, a new heart. Also, we like give you and a new spirit. We like put within you. If you don't have the new spirit of Christ, that is true of Christ in you and in me. If we don't have it, then we are still of the old man. That means we are still living in sin. We are still carnal. We are not yet become a new creature. Will I put within you? And I will take away the stony heart. You see it? The stony heart in you and me is the one that rear up his head when people abuse you. Them. You look, look at them with a with, uh, 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 face of a uh, uh, rejection. That, don't like that. How can you talk to me like How can you behave to me this way? You cannot talk to me like that. That's the heart of stone. If you still have the heart of stone, you are not yet of Jesus. I'm not yet of Jesus. We need to give up the heart. The, allow God to take away the heart of stone. How can it be done? You do the process of circumcision of the heart. He said, let me be again. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. 
Can you see it? We will take the stone of the stony heart from our flesh. Then they give us what? Will give us the heart of flesh. A receptive heart, a humble heart, a meek heart, a heart that pants after God. Just like what the David said. That my heart pants after God. When will I come before? When will I when will I come? When I'll seek you. A heart panting after God. That's the kind of heart that God will give to us. A heart that loves God with all without any rivalry. A heart that loves your brother and love your sister. Whether you come from the same tribe, whether you come from the same country, whether you come from the same village, you come from the same locality or not. You may be a, a, an Indian, you may be a Nigerian, but you love him, you love her because it is not you already lo loving him or her because the spirit of Christ in you love the man, love the woman, love that person because he's a believer. You are redeemed by the same blood of Jesus. You have the same Savior. You are going to the same heaven. You are seen by the same Holy Spirit. So you are of the same kingdom. Here of the kingdom of God together. You love him, you love her. That's why you love Jesus. Why? Because the heart is circumcised. The heart of stone is taken away and you are now being given the heart of flesh. That's what we all need. If you don't have it, forget heaven. If I don't have it, heaven is far from me. Let me read again. I will give you an heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you. You see, the spirit of Christ and the spirit of the devil cannot stay together. The Bible says flesh and the spirit, they are not the same. They are not, they, they are not, they, they, they don't coexist. The the flesh is against the spirit. Why the spirit is against the flesh? But when Christ gives you his own spirit, after removing the stony heart, my root, remove my stony heart, then our heart becomes so, so humble, so, so meek, so gentle, like dove. Let's continue. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my status. And you shall keep my judgment and do them. It is not to my beloved brothers and sisters to keep God's status and keep his judgment and to keep his precept to walk in the state to obey him to let her without being circumcised, without us being circumcised in their hearts. It's very, very difficult. It's not possible because we are seeing the flesh. Let's continue. Isaiah chapter 52, the book of Isaiah chapter 52. I read verse 11. Isaiah 52, I read verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye, go out, go ye out from death, touch not unclean things, go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean. That do what? That bear the face of the Lord. Men of all that go out to preach. <clears throat> Men of all that sing, will stand. Do not know that anytime you stand to sing, the, to, start, to sing. You are not just singing to the boss. You are singing to the glory of God. You are singing for heaven. Heaven is paying attention. Enjoy the melodious, your melodious voice, your focal system. Your voice being echoed to God and heaven is glorified, being praised. But out of the same hand you are using to sing to God, if it's not your circumcised, it's the same from the same heart proceed evil thoughts, evil imagination, evil thinking, suspicion. You suspect people anyhow. Anything that anybody do said, oh, it's because of me. That is that's not circumcised heart. That's the heart of stone. The adamination that's still rooted in our And we need to do something about it. Be ye clean that bear the first fruits of the Lord. If I preach, I teach, I do everything, and my heart is still of the stony heart, I, I'm just wasting my time. And the same thing for you. Whatever you do for God, if your heart is not yet circumcised, you are just wasting your time, wasting your energy. Wasting your time, wasting all your anything, your labor, your substance, your source, everything that you use 
they are wasted because they are not going to be rewarded. Why? Because you are not going to be in heaven to receive the reward. So let's crucify this flesh. Let this flesh die that Christ may reign in us. Look at what, what, what uh, John, the, John uh, Baptist said. He said, let him increase and let me decrease. Christ needs to increase in us. How can Christ increase in you when you still have Tony stony heart? I still have stony heart. No, you can't increase. The flesh will be increasing. But when you are circumcised, when I am circumcised, Christ will be increasing us. We'll be, we'll be growing from grace to grace. That's all we need. Let's go on. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17. Jeremiah 17. I read from verse 9. Jeremiah 17, I read from verse 9. Don't be willing to my beloved brothers and sisters. Jeremiah 17, I read from verse 9. It said, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, and who can know it? I may say, I may say oh, I'm a professor, I'm a, I'm a uh, uh, pastor, I'm a reverend, I'm bishop, archbishop. Oh, and then I wear so many regardless of all those uh, bishop things. People will be say, oh, yes, here he comes, here he comes. They are referencing me, but not know that I'm just an empty vessel without the circumcision of the heart. I may receive the applause of men, but not know it. The people does, who don't know that my heart is so deathly, so, so full of rottenness. Look at what they said. The heart of man, your heart, my heart, is desperately wicked, deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's all your dressing, my dressing. Can, you can't know the, 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 the intent of the heart by ordinary countenance, looking at someone's countenance. No. By facial pen or by your physical or physique. No. Those who kill, some husband that killed their wife, they say, oh, I love, it's my hon, it's my dad, it's my this and that. But not knowing that that man is having terrible hatred in the heart. By the time the, the man killed the wife, he said, ah, they are lovely couple. They are very good. They all they are together, this and that. But the heart is deadly wicked. You don't know what is conjoined the heart about the woman. But they do it as if they love each other. Just accept what they are. We say about Jesus. The thing you do. To deny Christ is unspeakable. Lying, cheating, falsehood, and many, many sins. Let's read verse I, the Lord, sat the heart. Not me sat the heart, not you sat the heart, but I, the Lord, Jesus said, God said, I, the Lord, search what? what? Search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. And when he said he sat the heart, not just the heart alone, look at what he said, even the reins of the heart. And what is the reign of the heart? It's like, let me read for all. Is the region of the kidneys, the lowest or the lower part of the back of each side, the seat of affection. Listen to this. The rain is the seat of affections and passions. Are you hearing me? What I'm saying is where emotion comes from, where your affection comes from. God said, He will judge you not only your, your heart alone, not just what you say with your man, not just. The thing you do physically, but you judge the emo your emotion will be judged, your affection will be judged, whether they are positive, whether they are negative, whether they are evil, whether they are good. So we need to look. We are we are we, we are dealing with Almighty God who knows everything about us. 
He said, I saw the heart and I, I do what? I try the reins. Your emotion, your passion, your what? Your affection. If you say, oh, I love him, I love her. God will try, will check whether it's really affection, whether it's really truly love, or whether you are just camouflage, whether you are just say you are just confessing false. Oh, I love my brother, I love my sister. But God is looking at kind of love. You say you love that brother, you love that sister. Our hearts need to be circumcised. If really we don't want to be condemned on the last. If really we don't want to miss the rapture when the trumpet sounds, it's an inward impulse where the affection and the passion reside. That's why I said, I'll sack the heart and try the reins. Many of us will read it, but we don't look at the meaning. What does it mean? What does it mean when they say the rain? So, brothers and sisters, God will not only judge what you did. Physically, you will judge your emotion, you will judge your affection, you will judge your, you will judge your, your, your inward thoughts, your inward feeling. What led you to do what you are doing will be judged. That's, good. That's why it's going to be surprise, surprise when Jesus comes. Surprise, surprise. Look at what the, the, the psalmist said in Psalm 139, verse. 30 to 16. Let's read that. Psalm. Let's go now to the book of Psalm. Psalm 139. I'm going to read from verse 13. Verse 139. I read in Jesus' name. Let me read verse 1, then I will jump to 3. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Can you see? That is the, the psalm. Speak it to us now. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. First three. Thou compassed my, my path and my lying down and, my, and, and art acquainted with all my ways. There's nothing you do, you know? Like I went around and laugh. It didn't laugh out. He just laughed inside, inside his mind. And the angel knew that he laughed. He said, why do you laugh? What makes you to laugh? And he said, I don't lie. I don't laugh. But God see he laugh. There's so many things we do in our hearts that nobody, no extra human being can pick it up. But extra God will pick them up. And for us not to be guilty, to be left behind on that day, then we should allow God to circumcise our heart, sanctify our heart, and Give us his own spirit that will make us to obey him, to live for him, to love the brethren, to love God on the Sabbath. Let me continue fast. Four. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it all to God. Fast five. Thou hast beset me behind and before me and laid the hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is hard. I cannot attain unto it. The first seven. Whither shall I go from your, from your spirits? Where will you go? Where will your thoughts, your motive, your emotion, your passion, your feeling that are negative, that are evil? You and me, where shall we go from his presence? Look at what he said. Where, where shall I go from that spirit? Whither shall I flee? From thy presence, if I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely, the darkness shall cover me. That's what many people do. Nobody knows anything about this. Let's just cover it up. Let's, uh, it's a secret talk. It's a t what I'm telling you now, just don't worry. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> that people are so foolish. People, the Bible said that the, 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 the fool said there's no God. Those who call themselves believers, 
unbelieving believer, when they are gossiping, when they are barbating, when they are telling tales, when they are sniping their brother and sister at the back, they said nobody is hanging, just between me and you. They are, they are so ignorant. They are so dark to the point that they don't know that the Spirit of God is with them when they are doing that. Because if you have your heart, even if you will be afraid to talk negative of your brother or your sister. We need circumcision of the heart. Let me read that please again. As if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even night shall be light about me. Why? In God is light. There's no darkness around him. Verse 12, yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, hmm. but the light shineth as the day. What a, no matter the sea you are covering up, it's not by God. It cannot be covered up. The darkness and the night are both alike to thee. Can you see? For thou possess me. Let me read for starting again. For thou hast possessed my race, my passion, my act, my 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 uh, 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 passion, my emotion, my feeling. He said, "Look at what brother said there." He said, "Thou hast possessed my reins; thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that." My soul knoweth that right well. My substance was not hid from thee. What is that called about substance? Everything that he does. He's not talking about money, he's not talking about wealth, not talking about riches. My substance, the, 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 the thing that is in you that are not of God, you cannot cover it from God. He said, My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in the secret. And curiously wrought in the thy eyes, did see my substance become perfect. Are you hearing that? Be what? It's not yet perfect because you need to go through the work of second grade, the work of sanctification. Being unperfect, and in thy books, all my members were written, which is continued, were fashioned when. As yet there was none of them. Brothers and sisters, we need to fear the Almighty God. We need to fear God. Because men of all will say that we are we are holy, we are waiting for the coming of Jesus. But all this little little thing that we do that we don't even take note of, those are the ones that are going to disappoint us when the trumpet sound. That's why Jesus said, Many are called, only few will be chosen. Are you one are you going to be with them? Allow your heart to be circumcised. Allow the Holy Spirit to direct your life. Speak when he says you should speak. Keep quiet when he says keep quiet. Do whatever he says you should do. Don't allow the flesh to take over your, your spirit man. Let's go. It's 4 30 now, but I'm going to do everything possible to finish that before five so that we can pray. God bless you. Let's continue. Now we are going to read. From the book of Psalm, Psalm 24. Book of Psalm 24. Please join with me quickly because of our time. Psalm 24. I read in Jesus' name. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world they. And they that dwell therein, both young and old, sinners and saints, both belong to God and belong to Him alone. Then, first, they said, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? That's where we are going. We are prepared to go to heaven. But it's asking the question Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in His holy place? Heaven is holy. God is holy. Jesus is holy. Holy Ghost is holy. The angels are holy. The saints of heaven are holy. Devil is asking you and me, who will you, will I, will, shall, are we going to be there? Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who shall ascend into his holy place? He that have a clean hands, 
clean hands and a pure, pure heart. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in the heart. For they shall do what? Who want to, who want to finish for me? Blessed are the pure in the heart. For they shall do what? See God. They shall see God. That means if you are not, if I'm not, if we are not pure in the heart, we are not going to see God. Full stop. Simple. Direct. Blessed are the pure for they shall see God. Now he's telling you and me here, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord or who stand in his holy place? He that have a clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Let's read from now. Let's go to uh, Psalm seventy-three. Psalm seventy-three. Quickly, Psalm seventy-three. Praise the living Jesus. I'm going to read it as a conclusion. I'm not going to read that now. Just bear with me. That will be the conclusion. Praise the Lord. So let's read Psalm 14. Psalm 14. I read from verse 1. Psalm 14. Psalm 14. We are reading from verse 1. Please bear with me as I open. Psalm 14. I read from verse 1 in Jesus' name. I read. Bull has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable words, works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looketh down from heaven upon the children of men, upon you and upon me, upon all of us that profess that we are Christian, to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. If indeed we're seeking God, we'll seek the peace of one another, we'll love one another passionately, we'll care for one another, we'll bear one another's burden, we'll, we'll bear with our brethren in their foolishness. They are all gone aside, they are all, all together become filthy. Everyone become what? Filthy. There is none that do it good, no, not one. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Who eateth my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord? Let's go on. Chapter 15. From verse 1, Lord, who shall abide in that tabernacle in heaven? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh up brightly. You, my brother, my sister, it's not possible for me and you to walk up brightly without sanctification, without circumcision of our hearts, without having the spirit of Christ in us. When, Christ, when the spirit of Christ is in you and in me, he rules us, he directs us, he leads us in all righteousness, not into sin. And walk in righteousness and speak the truth in his heart. He that barbited not with his tongue, are they, they are not barbiters? Are they not gossipers? Then would they be able to <laughs> dwell in the tabernacle of God? It's not possible. He that barbited not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, whether a saint, a believer neighbor, an unbeliever neighbor, who doeth not evil to his neighbor, who doeth not evil to his co worker, to his boss, to his colleague students. Let me read again. He that barbited not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up reproach against his neighbor. Many people reproach one. We reproach one another here. Are you think you think that you're going to join the tabernacle of God, or do I think I'm going to join the tabernacle? If I reproach you or you reproach me, reproaches come in different ways. By looking down your brother, looking down your sisters, diminishing them, 
speaking, using defamatory statement against them. You look down on them. And as you do that, you're looking down on Christ. And therefore, he said, who will dwell in, the, in that tabernacle? The tabernacle of God is in heaven. Verse 4. In whose eyes a vile person is content, but he honored them that fear the Lord. Do we lay honor one another? Do we reference one another? As brothers and sisters, them that fear the Lord. Who are the people that fear the Lord? The Christian, the born again. <clears throat> Those who are circumcised in their hearts. Do we honor them? Let's continue. He that swear to his own heart and change not. He that put not out his money to usury, nor take a reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall not what? Shall not be moved. There's guarantee that your heaven is sure. Because why? You cannot. Do all this without being circumcised, without being sanctified. So it takes sanctification to be able to live this life. And that's why we are talking about circumcision of the heart. Chapter 19 of Psalm. Psalm 19. Quickly. Psalm 19, I read from verse 13. <clears throat> Keep back thy servant. He's talking to you, talking to me. We are servants of the Lord. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let not them have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the word of my mouth <clears throat> The word of my heart, <clears throat> the motive of speaking, the motive of uttering whatever I utter out. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my savior. But men of all, we cannot proclaim that just like our, our brother, the uh, psalmist said here, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. When you examine your own word of your mouth, of the heart, of your meditation. Can you say that? Can you say what brother, uh, brother, uh, the psalmist said here? Can we, can we boldly say it? So we need to examine ourselves. Now, <clears throat> let's go now to the book of Psalm 73. That will be my final place that I'm going to read tonight. Psalm 73. I read from verse 1. Psalm 73, verse 1 down. I read in Jesus' name. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as of a clean heart. Not only to this time, to everybody that have a clean heart. And let me tell you, no man can have a clean heart that is still in the flesh, that is not yet born again. So if you are listening to me this afternoon, or this evening, or this morning, depending on where you are, if you don't, if you have not have any relation with Jesus, if you are not born again, what we are discussing will be like a, a mystery, you will not understand it, but the first thing you need to do is to give your life to Jesus. Accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Ask him to cleanse you from your sins, to make you to become a child of God, to wash you with his precious blood. The Bible says, who can bring the clean thing out of unclean? We are all unclean in the sight of God. Every one of us, without exception, we are unclean because we are born of a woman. He said, can you bring a clean thing out of unclean? Our mother, our father, right from Adam and Eve, they are all unclean. We came out of them. So automatically we are unclean as sinners in the sight of God. So a sinner needs a savior. So if you are not born again, you need a savior. You need Jesus. You don't need priests. You don't need pastor. You don't need fathers. You don't need a high bishop. You don't need a, 
uh, uh, whoever you told reference so much that the church where you are going, it is not the person that's going to save you. It's not the person that's going to cleanse you. But the only person that can clean you from your sin is Christ, the Savior, the Lord, the Son of the living God, who came to the world over 2,000 years ago, who was killed on the cross of Calvary, buried, hung on the cross for your sin and for my sin, who died for your sin and my sin, who shed his precious blood for us. That's the person you need. That's the person I need. That's the person we all need to be saved from sins. So when you come to him tonight, acknowledge your sin that you are a sinner. And that way you cannot save yourself from sin. And this, the wages of sin, according to the Bible, is dead. The wages of sin is dead, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That means no matter the kind of sin you have committed in life, kill, rape, commit adultery, fornication, whatever, even the highest sin, crime, if you turn yourself to Jesus tonight, you become a new Christian. That means what I'm saying is that when you give your life wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, without any reservation, without hiding anything from God, you become a child of God. Confess to Him. The Bible said that when we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins, from all unrighteousness. If you can only do it for her, then don't say that my sin is just too much. I don't think that I can be forgiven. No, even the, the worst sinner can be forgiven because that's why he came to die. He died for sin. He died for, he died for the sins of the world. So Jesus is expecting you. You want to be your friend. You want to come into your heart. You want to be your Lord and your Savior. Will you allow him today? Will you accept him today? Will you receive him into your heart today? Don't delay the day of your salvation. Today is the day of salvation because tomorrow can be too late. Jesus loves you. He took your punishment on the cross of Calvary. He was despised and rejected because of your sin and because of my sin. But thank God, the Bible said the great could not hold him because he was just. He rose or the third day for your justification. So that we can be just to be as if you have committed sin in life. That's how you from the dead and it's coming back again. And not only coming back to the, to the sinner, it's coming for the sinner this time, it's coming back to take you and me if you can only give your heart to him. If you can only accept as a Lord and Savior and be born again and allow his spirit to, to circumcise your hearts, you become a new Christian. Jesus will be your Lord and your Savior. Your name will be written in the book of life because it is written in the word of God that whosoever, whosoever, man or woman, young or old, king or prince, queen, pope, anybody, whatever your status, whatever your caliber, be the richest man in the world or richest woman in the world without Jesus and the lost. But thank God you are still alive. And Jesus is calling you today. What does he want to do? He said, give your heart to me. Rent your heart, not your guts. You want to come into your heart. You want to abide in your heart. You want to live in your heart. You want to become, you want to, to take you as a friend. Are you ready to give your heart to Jesus? Don't postpone the day of your salvation because tomorrow can be too late. Why? Why, is, why can it be too late? It can be too late if you delay. Because you don't know when you are going to die. I don't know when I'm going to die. Anybody can die at any time. Many people slept yesterday. They couldn't wake up this today. Men are dying right now, and men are still going to die. Even while we are still here in this meeting, while you are hearing this telecast, many are dying. It could be your turn, it could be my turn, it could be turn anybody. So that's why you don't need to delay the day of your salvation. The Bible says, boast not of your sorrow. Life is not yours, it's not mine. We are living a borrowed life. Your life, you are living a borrowed life. If you are living a sin, living a borrowed life, in anybody will serve you are. And the owner of your soul can demand for it at any time. And when Mr. Dead knock at the door of your heart, you don't have the power to say, I do, I'm not ready, please help me. I'm, I still have to fulfill. Oh, I'm still going to call it. I want to fill in my university. I want the mansion. I want to buy a car. I want to buy a little jet. Oh, all those are vanity. They are fans of vanity. And the Bible says, all oh, is vanity. 
But one day your soul will go to hell before the Almighty God to give an account of your, of your soul. What account will you give? Would you say you have never heard about Jesus? That Jesus is the Savior, is the Lord, the one that died for you, died for your sin, died for my sin? What excuse? You have no excuse. I don't have any excuse. So I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus, surrender your life to Christ. And for my beloved brothers and sisters, thank God for your life. You are still standing as a Christian. Thank God that you are still holding the banner. You are still holding to that, the, the horn of the, 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 the bowl. You are still running the race. You are still marching on. Thank God for your life. But maybe you have been discouraged because of what you are going through, because of some issues in your life. Let me read this to comfort your heart. To comfort our hearts. Let's read up. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well near sleep. Maybe that's a situation, beloved. My beloved brother, my beloved sister, that I've been serving God, I've been doing the will of God. Uh, I don't have anything in my heart against anyone. I love Jesus. I love my brethren. I want to do everything to please God. But things are not working out. Things are hard. Life is hard. Just like David. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bounds in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Oh, you said, all my colleagues in the world, they are, they are doing well. They have cars, they have good, they have, they have their mansion, they pay for their mortgage, they finish their pain, their mortgage. I don't have, I'm just living in the flats. They have mansion, they have everything. Things are going on well with them, but look at me. Brother says, look at what they said. For, I read it again. For I was envious at the foolish. They are foolish, they have riches. They are wealth, they are mansions, they are million, billion in the band, but they are foolish toward God. They don't have Jesus. They don't have God. That's why God said they are foolish. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, who is a wicked man? A wicked man is a man, is a woman that is sinning against God, who have not repented of their sin, who doesn't acknowledge God as God into their lives. Verse 4, for them, for there are no bound in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, like Christian. Neither are they plagued like other men, you and me. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covered them as a garment. Their eyes turned out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly. Concerning oppression, they speak lovely. Verse 9. They are set, they set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongues walk it through the earth. Therefore, his people run hither, and waters of a full of cup are run out to them. Verse 11. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly. Ungodly. Are you ungodly? Am I ungodly? Are we ungodly? Let that be far from you and far from me. They are ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Very day I have cleansed my heart. But I, that's for you and for me now. Very day I have cleansed my heart in vain. You have not cleansed your heart in vain. Let your heart be pure. Let your, your heart be holy. Let your heart be righteous. Let your heart be without any sin. And wash my hand in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued. I don't know how long you've been plagued, brothers and sisters. With needs, with wants, with so many things. And chasing every morning, cry and weep. Fast 15. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I shall offend against the generation of the chi of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. 
But look at verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Hallelujah. We go to the sanctuary of God today in prayer to seek the face of the Lord. Where is the sanctuary of God? Before the Most High God. When you are lost in His presence. Look at what he said. But Paul was, but David was envious about the riches of the wicked. But when he went to the sanctuary of God, he knew. Let's go on and see what happened. Fast forward to the game. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I the, their end. Surely, did he say them in the slippery places? Thou casted them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. That's where the ungodly will end up. But I pray that will not be your portion. That will not be my portion. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Verse 20. As a dream, when one awakened, so, O Lord, when thou awakened, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked. In my rings. Can you hear that again? When God said, I would sat the heart and I, I tried the rain. Can you say that word again? So you need to deal with your heart and your emotion, your motives, and your passion. Don't let them be negative. Don't let them be sinful. The Bible says, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it. Let me go on. Verse 20. So foolish I was, was I, and ignorant. I was an a beast before thee, that before God. Nevertheless, could like encourage yourself, brother and sister, in this place. Fast twenty be down. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. I will continually be with the Lord in holiness, righteousness, expecting the coming of the Lord. In, prepare yourself in blameless for for the rapture. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden my Holding me by my right hand. Brothers, no matter what you go through, the Lord is by your side. This is close to you. More than your breath, more than the breath of your nostril. Christ is close to you. God is close to you. Holy Ghost is close to you. So relax. Hold fast to the word of God with a clean heart. Verse 24. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and outward receive me to glory. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Oh, one day we're going to shoot to heaven. We're going to be raptured, cut away from this world. And brothers, sisters, it could be any time from now. Be ready. Verse 25. Whoa, whom I have, whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart, they fail it, but God is the strength of my heart. And my portion forever. Let God be your portion forever. Brothers and sisters, for lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go warning from thee. That is those who backslide from the Lord. Those who are just Living a, a camouflage kind of life. Those who are living in, in peace. Verse 28 and final. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord, the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. I read again. But it is good for me and for you, my sister. It is good for us to draw near to God with a circumcised heart with a pure heart, with a holy heart, with a heart that is void of offense toward God and toward man. That I have put my trust, so that we can put our trust in the Lord our God, so that we can declare his good work. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord keep, make his face upon every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you. I hand over to the moderator for prayers. God bless. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, sir. That was powerful. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory, Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We have heard. We have heard. We have heard. This is it is for our own good. I thank God that each 